हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू पार्ट टू ऑफ अवर आर्टिल ब्लड गैस एनालिसिस इन पार्ट वन वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट सम टेक्निकल इश्यूज सेवन स्टेप ऑफ ए वी जी रेस्पिरेटरी एसडोसिस एंड रेस्पिरेटरी एल्प्रोसिस इन दिस पार्ट वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट मेटाबोलिक एसिडोसिस मेटाबोलिक एल्क्लोसिस एंड वी विल गिव फ्यू एग्जाम्पल टू मेक यू बेटर अंडरस्टैंड so it is h i n and not the acid per se which is deadly it means h i n is more harmful because acid is not very harmful because body has many minerals acidic alkali so acid is not harmful the problem is h i n why because h i n is strong cation it react with n i n and where is the n i n in our body there are many enzymes like enzymes used in electron transport system or uh, digestive system so all enzymes are protein and these enzymes are having negatively charged anion so h i n is cation and enzyme is anion so reaction between at cation and and anion so it will change the proteins means the structure of protein which is harmful so as it is harmful because of is h i n so as i discussed role of buffer so buffer what is doing so it is what to repeat here again so say for example if any acid is coming inside the body it will associate to h i n and n i n so h i n will go inside the body it will react to bicarb because it is buffer bicarb is very common most common buffer in our body so while uh, with the combining bicarbonate it will convert to bicarbonic acid carbonic acid and it will associate to h2o2 and carbon dioxide and carbon dioxide will wash out by lungs so this is how the acid is getting neutralized by buffer and bicarb is getting replaced by kidney so this is how buffer is is very useful so what are the source of acid it may be non volatile acid means normally the our body is producing against some disease like lactic acidosis keto acidosis uremic anion uric anion kidney ckd diabetic keto acidosis and lactic acidosis so in response to disease our body is producing acid loss of bicarb by kidney or gut for example diarrhea loss of uh, bicarb it will the deplete bicarb level in the body and will create metabolic acidosis gain of acid like poisoning ethanol methanol so we are consuming acid it will cause acidosis so these are three principal cause for acidosis so acidosis is two type one is high anion gap another one is normal anion gap so high anion gap is also called hagma normal anion gap is called nagma these are abbreviation i'll use frequently in subsequent slides so what is anion gap in our body the number of cation equal to number of anions so both are both should be equal but there are few anions which we don't measure routinely so these are the anions which we don't measure so this is anion gap means this is cation and this is anion so the difference between cation and anion is called anion gap so in anion gap means the the anion uh, which we we are not measure what is constitute it constitutes acids like ketone salicylate like uh, fumarate acetate sulfate phosphate hippurate so these acidic component are included in anion which we don't measure routinely but remember around 
75 to 80 percent of anion gap is constituted by albumin. So albumin takes major part in anion gap. So in ICU, especially in critical care medicine, most of the patient they are having albumin deficiency. So we have to correct accordingly. So how to correct? So every decrease in albumin below 4, we have to add 2.5 for each gram. Say for example, if patient has albumin 2 gram and it should be 4, so how much less? 2. So every 1 gram, we have to add 2.5. So 10 plus 5. So NN gap is 10. So corrected NN gap is 10.5 means 15. So this is important. We have to correct for albumin. And how to measure, how to calculate by this formula. Sodium plus potassium minus chloride minus bicarb. But we take potassium as a negligible, so we don't include in equation. So what we are taking? Sodium minus chloride minus bicarb. So normal value is 8 to 12. So in high anion gap metallic acidosis, what happens? As I told you in beginning, the amount of acid is coming inside the body, equal amount of bicarb is getting reduced. Say for example, if 10 acidic component, 10 H came inside the body, the bicarb will get reduced by bicarb, by 10. Is it clear? So you can see if lactic acid, uh, this example of lactic acidosis, if lactic acidosis, lactic acid is coming inside the body, the H ion will be neutralized by bicarb. So you can see the bicarb is getting reduced. Okay. If bicarb is getting reduced, there will be increased anion gap because anion gap is what? Sodium minus chloride minus bicarb. So bicarb is got reduced. So it will create high anion gap because in anion gap, lactate is added. So anion gap is caused by accumulation of lactate. In diabetic ketoacidosis, ketone body will add in unmeasured anion. So bicarb will get reduced. So these are, these are the cause for high anion gap metallic acidosis. What the cause? Lactic acidosis, ketoacidosis, and renal failure like CKD, methanol poisoning, ethylene glycol ingestion, salicylate toxicity. So these substances causes high anion gap metabolic acidosis. The amount of acid is coming inside the body. The same amount bicarb is getting reduced. You have to remember this concept. And uh, coming to normal anion gap metabolic acidosis, in anion gap, what happens in uh, high anion gap? The bicarb is getting reduced. Anion gap is getting increased. But in normal anion gap, what is happening? amount of bicarb is getting reduced is replaced by chloride to maintain the anion gap. So you can see the anion gap is same in first and third. This is first and this is third, same. The bicarb is getting reduced. The amount of bicarb is getting reduced is replaced by chloride. So there is electric neutrality by, by, by chloride. So this is also called hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis because chloride is replaced but bicarbonate. So this is hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis. So you should remember whenever there is high chloride concentration in the body, it is nagma, normal anion gap metabolic acidosis. So what is the mechanism of uh, nagma? There is loss of bicarb, say for example, diarrhea or loss of bicarb from kidney, renal tubular acidosis 
and administration of acid. So by this you can understand in kidney disease, if it is CKD, it causes high non gap metabolic acidosis, HAGMA. If it is RTA, renal tubular acidosis, it causes NAGMA. So kidney disease can cause both. So these are the normal example, common example, diarrhea, isotonic saline infusion. In ICU, if you are giving NS left and right, means you are giving lot of normal saline, it will create normal NNK metabolic acidosis by retention of chloridine. Renal insufficiency early stage. In later stage, it is HAGMA. Renal tubular acidosis, acetylazolamide, utero introstu. So this condition causes normal NNK metabolic acidosis. So I told you the main cause for NAGMA is either kidney disease or loss of bicarb by diarrhea or any form, GIT, anything. So how to differentiate between these two? So we have to calculate urine anion gap. So urine anion gap is little different from blood anion gap. In urine anion gap, this is sodium plus potassium minus bicarb. Sorry, sodium plus potassium minus chloride ion. This is urine anion gap. So normally it is zero or slightly positive, normal. Because H, uh, NH4 ion is negligible. So the amount of chloride is almost equal to sodium and potassium. So normally zero or slightly positive. But what happens in NAGMA? NAGMA means hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis. There is lot of chloride inside the body. If there is lot of chloride inside the body, it will excrete by urine. In urine, lot of chloride. So what will happen? Chloride will get increased. There is more negative. So if urine anion gap is more negative in the tune of 20 minus 22 minus 50, it means kidneys functioning perfectly. The cause for nagma is not kidney disease, but other cause, GIT cause like diarrhea. If urine anion gap is zero or slightly positive, it means kidney is not excreting chloride. It means there is problem in kidney, that is RTA. So in this chart, you can see if urine anion gap is positive, it means kidney is not functioning. There is renal tubular acidosis. Then Further workup we can do, we can see urine pH. If urine pH is more than 6, it means it is a type 1 renal tubular acidosis. Otherwise called distal renal tubular acidosis. If pH is less than 5.5, means very acidosis, it is caused by type 2 renal tubular acidosis or proximal tubular acidosis. If there is hypokalemia. If it is hyperkalemia, this is type 4. If there is negative urinal anion gap, it means problem in extra renal, mostly GIT cause. So now delta cap, it looks difficult, very, very simple. As I told you in beginning, so the amount of the amount of acid, acid is coming inside the body, the same amount bicarb is getting low. And same amount anion gap is getting increased. Okay. So, say for example, in this uh, bar chart, there is bicarbonate normally and this is anion gap. So, the amount, the bicarbonate is getting reduced. Same amount anion gap will get increased. So, uh, uh, roughly, the amount of bicarb is getting reduced. Same amount anion gap will get increased. So, delta PCO, uh, SCO3 is, is equal to delta AG. Is it clear? So, can you imagine if 
बाइकार्बोनेट इज गेटिंग रिड्यूस मोर देन डेल्टा एनाइन गैप मीन्स बाइकार्बोनेट इज मच लेस एज कंपेयर टू एनाइन गैप इट मीन्स देयर इज समथिंग एल्स विच इज कॉजिंग एसिडोसिस अदर देन हगमा तो वट इज दैट दैट इज नगमा बिकॉज बाइकार्बोनेट इज मार्कर फॉर एसिडोसिस और एल्क्लोसिस तो से फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ देर इज डेल्टा ई जी इज टेन डेल्टा ई जी एंड डेल्टा बाइका विज थर्टीन मीन्स द टेन बाइकार्बोनेट इज इक्वल टू टेन बट ही हेज थ्री मोर रिडक्शन इन बाइकार्बोनेट तो मीन्स बाइकार्बोनेट इज रिड्यूस्ड मोर देन विच इट सपोज टू बी रिड्यूस so it means there is additional metabolic acidosis so in other example delta anion gap is say for example 10 and bicarb delta bicarb is 7 it means bicarbonate has reduced less as compared to delta anion gap means bicarb is more it means there is additional metabolic alkalosis because bicarbonate is alkali if bicarbonate is more than expected it means there is metabolic alkalosis so delta anion gap upon delta bicarbonate it should be equal means one if gap is less than one mean drop in SO3 is more than expected then there is two metabolic acidosis process means hagma plus nagma if it is more than one the drop in p SO3 is less than expected then additional metabolic alkalosis is present you understand the drop in bicarb is less it means there is something which causes alkalosis bicarb is more so you understand by this uh, delta gap this is important so metabolic alkalosis so it is most common acid base disturbance in hospitalized patient why because we are making patient dehydrated when patient is coming to our hospital we are not giving fluid enough it is volume loss or patient not drinking water or taking uh, feed that is causes loss of volume inside the body which lead to metabolic alkalosis loss of gastric acid and over use of diuretics so in metabolic acidosis there is more by more chloride ion but in metabolic alkalosis there depletion of chloride ion so less chloride ion so if there is less chloride inside the body it should be less from urine also so if urine chloride is less than 15 it means the body is responsive to chloride means responsive to normal saline so what are the causes vomiting nasogastric suction diuretics volume depletion laxative use so these condition there is hyper hypochloremia less chloride in urine so responsive to chloride in chloride resistance means inside the body chloride is enough so in urine lot of chlor uh, urine chlor uh, chloride more than 25 so the cause is primary hyperaldosteronism liquorasingation and severe hypokalemia so these conditions causes chloride resistance metabolic alkalosis and if patient is having metabolic alkalosis which is resistance resistant we have to rule out chloride depletion hypokalemia mineralocorticoid excess so this condition we should rule out in sustained metabolic alkalosis condition so now let's see some clinical case scenarios so i'll discuss case and you have to answer now coming to case number 3 so he is 70 year old uh, male cupd patient came with diabetes developed dka diabetic ketoacidosis and he was given 5 liter of ns 
so this is the evg so as i told you our step one is to check validity whether this evg is valid to interpret it or not so how to check this is pco2 upon bicarb into 24 so this evg is valid so now look for ph ph is acidotic because less than 7.4 so this is respiratory no this is metabolic because bicarb is 13 so this is metabolic acidosis once you find metabolic acidosis we have to check compensation compensation will be done by respiratory so we have to calculate co2 how much co2 should be there to compensate this metabolic acidosis so how to check we have to check by this formula 1.5 into bicarb plus 8 so how much it will come it will come 27.5 but our pco2 is 35 and compensation is 20 27.5 so our actual pco2 is more than what is expected it means there is additional respiratory acidosis along with metabolic acidosis. Now, when there is metabolic acidosis, we have to check delta gap. Delta gap means delta anion gap upon delta bicarbonate. So, what, um, so change in anion gap should be equal to change in bicarbonate. So, delta anion gap is 18 minus 10 and delta bicarb is 24 minus 13. So this is less than 1. It means bicarbonate is much, much lesser than what is expected. It means there is additional metabolic acidosis which is nagma, normal NNK metabolic acidosis. So what is our final interpretation? This is NNK metabolic acidosis with normal anion gap metabolic acidosis with respiratory acidosis. So by clinical history itself you must have understood like patient is COPD so it will cause respiratory acidosis. Diabetes with DKA, diabetic ketoacidosis will cause high anion gap metabolic acidosis and 5 liter of NS. So 5 liter NS will cause chloride accumulation which will cause normal anion gap metabolic acidosis. So this patient has three disorder. So case number four, he is 50, uh, 50 year old male presented with sudden onset of shortness of breath. Shortness of breath, it means it must be a respiratory problem. So by clicker ST, you can understand. So can you see the pH? pH is acidosis. So what is the cause of acidosis? PCO2, yes. Bicarb is also less. So this is mixed acidosis, respiratory as well as metabolic. But this case is respiratory cases. So we will take this as a respiratory acidosis first. So our primary disturbance is respiratory acidosis because we can see by clinical history. Is it acute or chronic? Because respiratory acidosis, it can be acute or chronic. So how to calculate delta CO2, 6, and we have to multiply by 0 0.003 and 0 0.008. So our pH is closer to this one. So this is acute. So this is acute respiratory acidosis. Now compensation. If you remember, I told you in last uh, uh, last part that compensation is 1 to 10 in acute respiratory acidosis. So compensation 1 to 10, so bicarb should be, bicarb should be increased by 0 0.6. So it should be 20.6. So at this pH respiratory acidosis, bicarb should be 24.6, but actual it is 20. It means it is less than what is expected. It means there is metabolic acidosis too. So, there is metabolic acidosis. 
if there is metabolic acidosis we have to check anion gap so anion gap is normal so what is our final diagnosis there is normal anion gap metabolic acidosis along with respiratory acidosis now case number 5 67 year old male with obstructive sleep apnea with unknown poisoning so look for ph ph is alkalosis more than 7.4 so cause for alkalosis respiratory no bicarb yes so this is metabolic alkalosis okay now check for compensation compensation is formula 0.7 into bicarb plus 21 so how much it will come 59 so at this ph pco2 should be 59 but actual pco2 is 80 so it is more than what is expected it means there is respiratory acidosis along with metabolic alkalosis so our final diagnosis is metabolic alkalosis along with respiratory acidosis so this is case of OSA which causes respiratory acidosis and poisoning which causes metabolic alkalosis. We don't know what poisoning. So whenever there is metabolic al alkalosis, we have to check urine and urine chloride. If it is less than twenty five, it means chloride responsive. If it is more than twenty five, it is chloride resistance. So this is case of chloride resistance metabolic alkalosis along with respiratory acidosis so case number 6 he is 67 year old male came in icu with diarrhea so you have to look for history diarrhea later intubated and kept on mechanical ventilation so look for avg so look for ph this is acidosis okay so acidosis it is respiratory no this is metabolic so this is metabolic acidosis when there is metabolic acidosis we have to see compensation so how much pso2 should be there by this formula it should be 22 and our avg is also 22 so this is compensated this is fully compensated so now check for anion gap so anion gap is 10 but notice one thing albumin is 2 okay so i told you each gram of reduced albumin anion gap should be added 2.5 so corrected anion gap would be 10 plus 2.5 into 2 means equal to 50 so corrected anion gap is more 15 so whenever there is high anion gap we have to check delta gap okay so if you check delta gap actual anion gap minus 10 24 minus into actual bicarb so delta anion gap is how much 5 and delta bicarb is 24 minus 9 how much 15 so reduction in bicarbonate is more it means there is normal anion gap metabolic acidosis also so this is case of metabolic acidosis high anion gap and normal anion gap metabolic acidosis so last case 34 year old male came to emergency with suspected opc poisoning okay so look for ph ph is alkalosis okay so this is respiratory no this is metabolic because bicarb is higher so primary disturbance is metabolic alkalosis now we have to check compensation so this metabolic alkalosis should be compensated by pco2 so how much pco2 should be it should be 53 and actually is 55 this is almost equal so there is no addition respiratory disturbance 
whenever there is metabolic electrolysis, we have to check urine chloride. So how much chlorine chloride this patient is having? 10. It is less than 25. It means this is chloride responsive. It, it means there is depletion of chloride inside the body, which causes metabolic alkalosis, probably due to dehydration. To diagnose is metabolic alkalosis, which is chloride responsiveness. The probable cause, patient came with OPC poisoning and the treatment for OPC poisoning is gastric lavas. So because of gastric lavas, there is excessive gastric suction which is causes volume depletion inside the body causes metabolic alkalosis, chloride depletion. So take home message, never interpret AVG without clinical history because clinical history give clues what disease we are dealing with. Always check validity before interpretation of AVG. AVG should be checked for validity whether we should interpret it or not. CAA gradient for hypoxemic patient. Acid base balance, we have to look for pH. It is acidotic or alkalosis. If it is acidosis alkalosis, respiratory or metabolic and compensation. If it is metabolic acidosis, we have to check anion gap, delta gap, urine anion gap to see cause for nagma. If it is metabolic alkalosis, we have to check urine chloride to see whether it is chloride responsive or resistance. So, thank you. If you really, really like this video and if you think this is useful, please like, comment, share with your friends. If you have not subscribed this channel, please subscribe it. I have uploaded 50 videos which may be helpful for you. So, just search bar, you type Hemant Kumar Agarwal. Dr. Hemant Kumar Agrawal, you will find 50 videos which may be useful for your routine day-to-day -day practice. So with this, thank you very much. We'll see you with next video.